how's it going? It's Carl, aka Carl Drum Tech. I'm here right now in Beverly Hills, California. And today I want to talk about um, ticks and how do you deal with ticks? And if you're a tick, how do you deal with uh, not being a tick? Um, I think it's important to right now just talk about where the word tick comes from. And just so you know, for viewers who have never heard of the term before, uh, you can get an idea of exactly where, what that means. A tick, well, okay, so when you say tick, Right, this comes out of the old school system. Some of you guys were probably not even born when this system came out. That when you judge high schools or drum lines or color guard or anything like that, anytime you make a mistake, it's counted as a tick, right? So the judges have these sheets, right? So anytime they hear something dirty, anytime uh, you know you you drop a flag, anytime um, you know your feet are off step, they're going to mark you down for all of those infractions and count it as a tick. And by the end of the day, um, you know, after your performance, they're gonna show, have the sheet where it counts all your ticks in your performance, and then they kind of base your score uh, around how many ticks you had compared to the other groups and in comparison to how much they ticked, right? So the word tick has kind of survived that tick system, even though we don't really have that system anymore. Now, nowadays, you know, groups are judged based on accomplishments rather than the, mis the mistakes that they make. So, but I, that word has kind of stuck around to mean somebody who makes a lot of mistakes, somebody who is not very proficient, somebody who in your line compared to everybody else is just like not cutting it or they just make a lot of mistakes and we call them ticks, right? For a lack of a better word. And again, now you know where that terminology came from. So what do you do when you have a tick? in the line right so i could talk about you know the things i did especially when i you know was in drum lines and you know i had ticks in my groups or um you know if i was teaching and then you had students who were ticks like how do you deal with that right and it's like my student leaders are like racking their brains trying to figure out how to deal with this person who is not practicing enough who is making all these mistakes who doesn't know their music they're just you know they may not say they're a tick but they are a tick right and you know, for you guys, and maybe you guys use that term as well to describe somebody who is making all these errors or somebody's just kind of holding the group back because they're just not on the same level as everybody else is, right? So how do you deal with ticks? And now I could talk about, you know, like the different points in my life where, you know, maybe I would have taken a very, a very aggressive approach where, you know, I would kind of like punish people for making mistakes or I would, you know, severely guilt them into it or intimidate them into making sure they don't make any mistakes. You know, I've done all, <laughs> everything under the sun in terms of how, it, legally, <laughs> to get people to not make mistakes, to scare them into submission, to intimidate them into being afraid of making mistakes so, they, so that they stop becoming ticks. But I've also, you know, gone the other route as well where I've been patient. I try to help them. I try to encourage the student leaders to help them and to have that same kind of patience as well. And I know it's extremely hard to be patient in an activity like this where, you know, you only get four years, you only have a season, you know, you only have until you're 21 in the drum course to be the best you could possibly be. You know, I, I think that life is, is a long game, but in many ways, marching band and drumline all this stuff, because of the age limits and stuff like that, it's a short long game, right? So the long game, you need to, in terms of long game, you need to think about how you need to be patient. You need to make sure that you don't push this person so hard that they hate what they're doing, right? And you need to have, you know, have that empathy where at one point in time, we were all ticks. You can't sit here and tell me that I'm not a tick. I've never ticked in my life. Guess what? You, everybody, all right, has been ticks before. So you need to have that empathy, right? Even if that's just like learning something new and you're trying to play something with a buddy and you're just like not, it's just not happening, right? You're ticking in that moment. So everybody has ticked at some point in their lives. So you need to have that empathy where you think, okay, well, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have it before and then now I have to make sure that I get it. And, you know, because you have that experience, you know what it's like for that person to struggle. You know what it's like for that person to not get it and be frustrated at themselves and feel bad. It's bad enough if you kind of make them feel bad, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you make them feel bad when they're already making when they're already making themselves feel bad. Does that make sense? All right? So, just have that empathy for that other person and to have that patience, you know, and just 
not beat up on them so much that they hate what they're doing. That's the worst thing that can happen is that, you know, they do things not because they love it, not because they're enjoying it, not because, you know, there's these positive uh, emotions that they get, but because they're afraid or because they're angry or, or perhaps they're just, you know, they're just, uh, they're just fed up. So they have no choice but to, Im to improve and get better. But it just comes from a really bad place of, you know, just they're, they're getting pushed to the edge and it's just not as fun, right? This whole activity is supposed to be fun. We're supposed to enjoy what we're doing. So make sure that you make it enjoyable for that person by not pushing them too hard. On the, and on the same hand, yes, you do have to make sure that you're on top of it. You know, if you are in that position of leadership or your teacher, you need to make sure that they're absolutely doing what they need to do in order to improve, but it needs to be in a way that's very productive in a positive manner so that they enjoy what they're doing because when you're enjoying what you're doing you're going to want to do it even more you're going to uh this person is going to find all kinds of ways to get better because they enjoy it so much because they love it because they have so much fun with the people who they're working with it's, it needs to be an environment of encouragement so that they could be brought up all right so now what if you are the tick in the line what do you do in that situation I mean, I certainly know what it's like, right? It's like, you know, you feel like you're letting yourself down. You feel like you're letting the whole team down. And you have this feeling of just like, this is not acceptable for me, for me to be struggling and to be, uh, you know, not the same level as everybody else. So first of all, that's the first step, right? It's not, you need to have that understanding like, all right, this is not acceptable. I, you know, this is not the standard I set out for myself. So I need to make sure that I'm practicing, putting in the time to get better and, um, yeah, there is that sense of you can't let the team down, especially, you know, like marching band, drumline, color guard. This is kind of like a team sport, right? So you need to make sure that you're doing your part to make sure that you are on top of your game so that everybody can benefit because we, because, hey, it's very cliche, but you know, you're only as good as your, 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 uh, your worst player is totally true, right? Especially in a team um, setting, okay? Now, if there's just one more analogy I can provide, you know, I think in terms of just the long game thinking and in terms of just like having that patience and having that empathy, just think about how like, you know, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the Lakers and uh, there's a player named Kobe Bryant. If you don't know him, he's probably one of the best players who ever played basketball, maybe second to Michael Jordan. If you don't, if you don't know who Kobe is, but you know who Michael is, right? And uh, he had this, and obviously Kobe, okay, now that you know where he's at, he's this just this extremely high level of you know skill and competence in the sport of basketball he had a teammate named Derek Fisher Derek Fisher is not an all-star by any means he's not the best player on any of those Laker teams by any means right he's probably one of the most unathletic players I mean he was, he's de definitely very good at defense and things like that and you, know, you can make big shots but you know you're this is not somebody who you could compare to with Kobe Bryant in terms of just talent just straight up talent and no matter how hard Derek Fisher worked it's probably not gonna happen for him to be as good as Kobe Bryant. But Kobe respected the heck out of Derek Fisher. Do you know why? Because Derek Fisher worked just as hard as Kobe, right? So if you are doing everything you can to be, at, to, to work hard and get, and to become the best that you can possibly be, right? You're going to get the respect of everybody around you whatever your ceiling is, right? As long as you're pushing, as long as you're improving every single day, as long as you reach your fullest potential, right? And everybody knows that, nobody can doubt that, right? And that's the, on the other side, right? So if you're at, at the level where you're very talented and then you have these guys who are not, or girls who are not as talented, but you see them working extremely hard and they're practicing and their heart is into it and they love it, but you know, maybe just the skill just isn't catching up to the, um, to the to the practice level just know that in time it will get there because they're putting in that work and you have to respect the hell out of them because they're working so hard maybe the talent isn't quite there but like I said it's gonna get there and even if it doesn't you just you have to respect I mean what can you what can they do right if just the talent level doesn't reach the effort level right it's not the same level what can you do, right? It's like, you know, it's just genetics or it's just, you know, I, I don't want to make mistakes. I, I mean, not mistakes. I don't want to make excuses or anything like that or have these reasonings. But, you know, everybody's predis predisposed to, you know, achieve a certain kind of potential. But as long as everybody's working hard, as long as everybody's doing their absolute best, that 
is the most important thing, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so, um, so if you're a tick, make sure you're working hard to reach your fullest potential uh, and just make sure you're enjoying it. And if you're on the other side, you're trying, you're, you have these ticks around you, you need to inspire them to enjoy the activity even more so, so that they want to practice, so they're motivated to practice to be the best that they can be, all right? And guys, let me just add about Derek Fisher. Um, Derek Fisher is the kind of guy who, like I said, is not the most talented player on the team, but you needed somebody like him. I mean, you know, Kobe Bryant has five championships. Um, he wouldn't have won those championships if he didn't have a player like Derek Fisher, because Derek Fisher was the kind of guy who made clutch shots. And clutch shots is like, you know, when, you know, the team is down by three points with like two minutes left and he makes a three to tie the game. Or like, you know, with two minutes left, the game is tied, he'll make a three or a two to put the Lakers ahead. So, um, which is the team that they played on. But, um, you know, you, even though he wasn't the most talented player, like I said, he always worked hard. Um, and he was a valuable member of the team. And if you were just to say like, you know, well, we only want the talented people and said, you don't need guys like Garrett Fisher and you kind of cut him from the team or whatever, then that is absolutely foolish. And in that situation, Kobe would not, uh, probably may not have that many championships without Derek Fisher. So, you know, kind of relate this to your situation where, you know, if everybody in your drum line is working hard, no matter what the talent level is, I mean, talent level is always gonna be a factor, but really what it comes down to is, you know, how hard is the person working? You need everybody on your team, no matter what talent level, as long as everybody's working hard, and if you can inspire them to do so, to work hard, to enjoy, to, to enjoy what they're doing, and to give it their all, then it doesn't matter what talent level they're at because you, your group, will still be successful and you will benefit from it and they will benefit from the experience uh, that they're having. All right, bonus round, yo. We're gonna do a little lesson here by request. We're going to grid paradiddles, all right? So you're gonna accent the first note, the second note, the third note, and the fourth note. Okay, and the tricky one is the last one because you have a low right followed by quickly after that, you have a accent right after. So you have to do a little bit of quick motion whip or else you might be late. Now, why is it important to grid a paradiddle? Well, it, when you emphasize each accent, it gives you a whole new awareness for each note. Traditionally, you know, paradiddles are only accented by the first note. So we're only focusing on that. We tend to focus on just that. But when you accent the other notes that aren't normally accented, it creates a whole new awareness for, other, for them and it helps with the sound quality, with your timing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Hopefully the video lesson is going to help you tick less on your paradiddles. So if you guys like this video, make sure you hit that like button. I would really appreciate that. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave a comment below, or if you have any suggestions on the types of topics you would like for me to talk about. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I make sure, I'll make sure to leave a link to make it easy, guys, for you, to make it easy for you guys to do that. And please check out my last video as well if you have not seen it already. Now, if you guys feel like uh, this video could help somebody else, maybe it's another tick, maybe it's an instructor or a session leader who could use some ideas about uh, in, in, with regards to this topic, make sure you share this with them or sh and or share it on all of your social media platforms. I would really appreciate that. And until next time, take care. I'll see you in the next video.